It's simple. First, opposition must stop becoming personal. All they do is they are very personal. Alright? They kind of uh, defame people, they tell lies. For example, I read something that I, but my deputy minister, Dr. Maglin de Cruz, went for shopping with the PM's wife, and I went with the PM's wife's daughter to do shopping. It's lies, you know. I've never left this country. I've never followed the PM anywhere. I've never went with, with him to any of his trips. The most I would have gone to the airport to send him and bring him back, welcome him back, because as a party leader, it is my duty when my boss travels and come back to go to the airport to, you know, send him or bring him. That's all. But the opposition, right, everywhere. I can take them to court, sue them for all this defamation. But we are wasting time. Every day you get so many defamatory remarks. So you have opposition only interested in this mm -hmm. kind of thing. Lies after lies after lies. Mm -hmm. So until you have an opposition who is focused on development, mm -hmm. on a vision, on something where they can provide for the future of this country, mm -hmm. future of the children. You see, for example, you say, if I am in power, I give you free loan for PTPN. It is a not a fair kind of a suggestion because PTPN loan is a revolving fund. Mm -hmm. You take the money, you use, you return back, somebody else can be educated. So you see, so you just make popular statement. Mm -hmm. Alright, you want to be popular. You want to give a free land to people. You want to do this kind of thing. So that kind of opposition will never, never succeed in this country. Uh, Lukti Halim has asked, uh, he would I like to know the uh, current ethnic composition of PPP and probably asking why are there more Indians and other races in the PPP which is a multiracial party? All right. You see, PPP was started in 1953 by uh, mostly uh, uh, intellectuals. Mm -hmm. They championed uh, among them were Indians, Malays and Chinese as well. They championed for the hardcore poor. Mm -hmm. They were actually fighting for petty traders, hawkers, taxi drivers, people in the street basically. Mm -hmm. They were championing local government issues actually. Mm -hmm. Along the way, they, they started in 1953. They did join alliance one time, many people might not know. In 1954, they did join alliance together with UNNO, uh, MIS, MC and MIC. But they fell out because we do not agree with race-based politics and they did not also agree with the distribution of seats for the local government elections, so they left. So in 1969, TPP won the state of Perak, mm -hmm. short of uh, two seats when two of them left, yes. they were short of two seats and then of course, subsequently you realize that uh, where do we stand? What do we go after that? You've got a state, but you cannot form the government, you're short of two seats and then uh, you have support fully supported by the Chinese community. Mm -hmm. The PPP at that time was purely supported by China. Mm -hmm. Then you have a situation where uh, Pakistan National opens up and says for the betterment of the country, for the future, mm -hmm. PPP's leadership at that time decided to be like a candle. Okay, in order to give life, we have to burn yourself. So they said, okay, we will no longer carry this opposition tag, we will join BN. Mm -hmm. So we joined BN mm -hmm. and we formed PPP Amno government. After that, we become Amno member. Mm -hmm. Then, along the way, it took what from 1969 to 74 elections. Then, 1993, when I became a leader, mm -hmm. suddenly a lot of Indians fell. There is an alternative Indian leader for them. Then you find a lot of Indians joining. And not just because you are Indian, is it? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I, you know, maybe yeah. I'm Indian. I, I, I look Indian. I am Indian, and I'm a Malaysian Indian. So people feel, okay, let's try. There could have been that reason because we never had that many Indians at that time. Mm. Then you find these this Indians coming in uh, in large numbers. But to tell you the truth, our composition today, the Malays have risen. We have now 25% Malays, mm -hmm. we have 30% Chinese. Mm -hmm. And we only have something like 40 over plus Indians. Mm -hmm. But you always see a lot of Indians because when we do function, when we do activities, you find the Indians are out there in numbers. Mm -hmm. They will come. They will come and support. They will come. Some come to see me. Some come to be there. Some come to participate. So the impression given is. But out of our 600,000 members, we have now reached a stage where we have 25,000, 25% of uh, Malay members. So by the B, by PPP joining the BN and by remaining within the BN, has it helped the PPP? Has it benefited the PPP? I think uh, if I want to be honest on this question, definitely it never benefited the PPP. 
Being in BN, it never benefited the PPP. Really? Uh, PPP itself, the party never really benefited in the sense, as a political party, it could have grown very far. Because during those days, 69 and 75 onwards, we never had all these opposition parties. You never had PKR, you never had uh, all these kind of NGOs and oppositions and all these things coming up now. Uh, so we would have been more popular on our own. If he would to break off and go back to the opposition, would it create this, the same mandate as it did during the 50s I, and the 60s? I would like to say this clearly, you know. Many times uh, I've been led to go into the opposition. Many people, friends of mine, have said, you know, you were too old, you would have pulled out today, you would be somewhere else, the people would be somewhere else. All this could be true, could not be true. But I must say this, now. I have my principles and my character. Mm -hmm. No way I'm going to compromise on that. Mm -hmm. If there is an opposition who can be better than Barca National, I will join the opposition. I will immediately come out of BN and join that opposition who can give something better to the people today in this country. But isn't that the case of jumping ship or going where the yeah, is but they don't have. They don't have. You don't have. So recently you have asked for six parliamentary seats and 12 state seats uh, to be given to the PPP. But in 2008 you sort of made the same sort of uh, request and it was not given to you. Uh, but and you threatened that you would leave the coalition uh, if the party was not given these allocations. Would you be making the same threat today? You see, when you, when you say, when you don't have a role to play, I will keep myself out of the game. It's not a threat. I never made any threat. And uh, we can't consult as a threat, number one. Number two, you are a political party. If continuously you don't have a role to play, then you might as well don't be a political party. You might as well convert yourself to be an NGO. Mm -hmm. Many many people have said many things. When I said ISA should be removed for the betterment of PP, uh, for the betterment of Pakistan one time, the one minister said my mouth should be stitched. So what happened today? So a lot of people will say a lot of things, you know, like Ali Rastam uh, say don't ask for seats and today Ali Rastam is the person who have given us the first seat. Kota Laksamana seat, uh, seat belonging to MC, Ali Rastam has already given to PPP and Dr. Sri Choi Solak has also have agreed that PPP can have the seat. Oh, so you, you mean, see, uh, Kota, Laksamana. Kota Laksamana in Malacca okay. at the moment. So you see, people who spoke then in that way have woken up now and see the reality. So why have they suddenly changed their mind? Because they see the strength of PPP. From Helen Lee, sure. Uh, will you be contesting the Taiping NPC this coming generation? See, Taiping seat was given to me in a lot of controversial situations. Mm -hmm. There was so much of bickering and I guess the seat was given for me to lose because many people don't like me being vocal, speaking up, telling the truth, being sincere in politics. Many didn't like it. So, for some reason, some or other people supported and we won the seat in 2004. 2008 election is a different kind of a political tsunami, we call it, and it was a BN bashing situation, mm -hmm. and we had a Prime Minister whose popularity dipped so badly that people didn't care who stood for election and they just voted anyone but BN, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of a situation. Yes. But for me in Taiping, I realized it was support touched by both MIC and Krakan. You have proof of this? I have proof of that, there's no problem. I'm speaking to you openly, you can record that. So we have complete proof of uh, these two parties want to make sure that I lose in that pain. Uh, so, after the elections, we did a post-mortem and we found out the loss is not because of the tsunami itself, the loss is because of the sabotage. Mm -hmm. And immediately, within a month, I already surrendered the seat back to Tansi Kosukun, saying that, look, get your candidate to work on it, so that we don't have to fight over the seat in the last moment. Mm -hmm. And this is already done. I don't understand now why uh, Grakan, uh, whoever, Chamkoyun or somebody else is now started barking and making some noise. Uh, I, I don't understand. I've already given up the seat and I'm not contesting in the seat. I'm not going to take back the seat. I'm uh, actually uh, duty bound now to make sure that all those people in the last uh, years who have supported me in PPP, worked with me in PPP, many leaders, good, great leaders, many people sacrificed their business and their career to be in PPP, to bring up PPP. They like my concept, One Malaysia, they like my concept of multilateralism, they like me to speak up. And uh, so people really actually uh, supported these leaders. I think I want to find seats for them. I want to find positions for them before I think of any position or post for myself. Right. Okay. I've done enough, I need to do this for the leaders.